Okay, so we've made it to the afternoon. Um, I just want to preface this that um, there are way too many slides to do this all in 15 minutes, so you do have the opportunity to get a copy of all the slides um, so that you can look at them and read through them in uh, leisure, especially the part that's more about the tips. So um, we know that there are general guidelines for uh, preventing cancer, some by the American Cancer Society, um, others from the American Institute for Cancer Research and the World Cancer uh, Research Fund um, look at more specifically diet and cancer. But we're here to talk about uh, colon cancer and it just, it's still true, diet and exercise is really probably the most important uh, part of what we need to do. This is some um, data from the uh, recent update in uh, looking at nutrition and, and colon cancer and looking at what evidence is actually pretty convincing and what is still um, only prob probable. So um, we've combined uh, the recommendations specifically for colon cancer from both the American Institute for Cancer Research and from the um, American Cancer Society into these um, seven uh, recommendations. The first three are the kind of the bad actors and the, the next are the uh, more positive one. So obesity, uh, we know that it does affect risk. Um, there have been several studies that have looked at this. And there are a series of mechanisms that um, are proposed to be part of the reason why it, uh, can, why it can cause cancer. Um, but the important thing then is, so what do we do about it and how does it help? And we do know that intentional weight loss um, is associated with a reduce in your risk. It increased is your sensitivity to insulin. It changes your hormones. And it re reduces that inflammatory state um, that may be contributing to the problem. And um, there are classic ways to think about uh, what you should look at. And in your slide, in your handouts, you do have a uh, nomogram so you can estimate your own BMI. And the goal is to be within the normal range. So um, in addition to that, in specific, specifically for colon cancer, there seems to be uh, some uh, association with abdominal fatness. and so. Looking at waist measurement is another aspect that you could think about um, measuring and can help in addressing your risk. Now, easy to say, how do we do that? There's lots of different mechanisms I'm sure you've, you've heard about um, and have tried to implement. But one of the things that are new that I think are really interesting and important are some of the new apps that are available either on your smartphones or your com on your computer. Um, things like Lose It, My Fitness Pal, Super Tracker, they're free. Um, they're places where you can go and input your, um, what you're eating. And it is that awareness, that awareness of what you're eating each day that can actually really help keep your weight under control and lose if, if need be. Of course, physical activity is part of helping you control and keep the weight off as well as losing it. And I think we have to remember that this is the environment that we live in. Before, you can have a coffee and a muffin, and it might have been 250, 300 calories. Now, if you have a, a, a latte and some of the bigger muffins, it can be 800 calories in a day. That, that's a 500 calorie difference. So just the sneaking portion sizes is something that we really have to think about when we're thinking about weight. This is for you to look at what is a portion. And for me, one of the most important uh, things to look at is to remember to look at the facts, uh, labels on the products that you may be um, considering. Um, it's not just how many calories are in the serving, it's how many servings are in the package. I had uh, somebody come up to me and they said, well, you know, this drink only has 50 calories. Right, but she didn't understand that the drink contained two and a half servings, so that drink had 125 calories if she drank the whole thing. So understanding your, uh, the number of servings in anything that you buy, um, again, important. The next um, factor is, uh, the look, is looking at red meat. There does seem to be data that sup continues to support the fact that red meat and red and processed meats may um, add to colon cancer risk. And there are a variety of mechanisms that may be at the source of this. Some of it, the fact that it has uh, heme iron, which is linked to cell damage. 
It could be the nitrosamines. It could be, in part, some of the way the foods are um, processed. But also, too, uh, most of your processed products do have uh, extra salt and they have nitrates, which we know, and nitrites are associated with a risk. So what to do? Um, the question is you don't have to completely avoid red meat. We're missing something here, lamb. So red meats include beef, pork, veal, venison, and lamb. And it's not that you have to avoid it completely, but the recommendation is to stay under 18 ounces per week. And I, I think that's a fairly decent amount. You could still have um, red meat in a reasonable size uh, several times a week. There is no recommended uh, size and servings uh, for your processed meats. So, you know, it's a continuum, and we need to think about where, what we're going to choose more often. If you've been to other talks um, that we've given here, this you might have seen this slide before. It is from the American Institute for Cancer Research. And the idea is, can you move slowly from a plate that has been your traditional American plate to one where at least half of your plate is vegetables, um, a quarter, perhaps a whole grain, and only um, a quarter of your plate uh, a, a um, animal protein. But the goal is you can move there slowly um, over time. You don't have to do this right away. So consuming a diet with an emphasis on plant foods has been recommended. Some data has shown that um, uh, diets that are more Mediterranean in their nature um, can have better outcomes and less risk, even in patients who have uh, colon cancer. Studies have been done by Meyer Hart and his group, and he showed that a Western-style diet was actually associated with less recurrence and um, less mortality. So the idea is to kind of move slowly away from your standard um, American plate, including more whole grains in your diet as well as fruits and, and vegetables. Um, and then the third um, uh, bad actor seems to be alcohol. And there's uh, a number of mechanisms that may be involved with alcohol being a carcinogen. Um, what people often forget is that it's actually a very large contributor of calories um, in the U.S. adult population. So the recommendation is to, if you are going to drink, to do so in moderation. And I always think, well, after you've had two glasses of wine, who cares about the diet? So you really want to think about it. So what is a serving? My friend here conveniently has found one that fits his bill. Um, but these are your standard, what is standardly considered a serving of alcohol. Um, 12 ounces of beer, 5 ounces of wine, and 1.5 ounces of, of spirits. The other is to, again, the calories. I thought this was pretty interesting, that a pina colada is about as many calories as a um, quarter pounder. So the calories can sneak up on you. Physical activity, um, that's one of our things, one of the things we can do to help ourselves. Lots of different ways which it may decrease our risk. Um, it helps maintain our weight, it improves the immune system, it changes the hormonal um, milieu. And uh, remember, all of these things that we are, are talking about are things that can actually help us not only prevent perhaps colon cancer, but other chronic diseases. So the issue is, can you think in terms of your leisure and occupational time as areas where you can um, add in some more physical activity? And so everybody thinks of these, right, going to the gym and, you know, going for your walk. Um, but there are other things that you can do. I actually have an exercise ball in my office, and I find I have much less back pain and discomfort um, with the ball. Um, this is the pedal bikes. Um, these are other ways, other combinations that you can think of how you can add a little activity into your day. Fiber um, has come and gone with regard to being thought to um, actually work being uh, uh, convincing in, in reducing colon cancer. It was out and then it's been back in, but um, recently some more studies have seemed to um, cemented its um, a benefit in uh, reducing your risk. And there's uh, different mechanisms. Uh, definitely one is moving um, things more through, more quickly through the colon. Um, but 
Um, other things may be changes in your gut bacteria. So what can you do? The idea would be to con increase your fiber intake, and again, you have a handout on ways to do that, um, including uh, also more whole grains, because there's some interest in specifically uh, wheat bran as possibly being helpful. Um, so again, the idea is to think about a healthy diet, a, um, a varied diet, less Western in its uh, processed foods, um, and more of an, uh, of an, of an focus on uh, a plant-based diet. Um, and we know, unfortunately, single studies of nutrients have not been uh, that uh, successful, but I will touch on a number that we um, have looked at. Um, vitamin D, as mentioned before, what we do know is that vitamin D status tends to be low in patients who have been diagnosed with colon cancer. But we don't know if it's causal, we don't know whether it's the low vitamin D that causes the colon cancer, is the colon cancer causing the vitamin D. But it does seem to make sense um, to think in terms of having your vitamin D level check and making sure that you can get yourself into a normal range. Calcium um, and specifically milk have both been associated with the decreased risk of um, adenomas, which are your precancerous lesions. Um, for some reason, milk but not other forms of dairy seem to be associated with this, and there's a number of ways that it can, we think it can act. Um, but uh, what is important to think about is that, you know, when you take a nutrient, there are complications. So the American Cancer Society is very careful in recommending uh, calcium for um, cancer prevention because we do know that excess calcium is associated with increased prostate cancer risk. Same thing if you've been listening to the news, we know that excess calcium may be actually bad for the heart. So the idea is to try to stay within um, the guidelines of about 1,200 milligrams of calcium total from the day from your diet, mostly, and if you must supplement, um, a low-dose supplement so you don't go above. And then garlic. Other than harming vampires, what can garlic do as a negative? But there are a lot of different nutrients that are out there that we're investigating that still have not had enough um, data to be uh, presented forward. There's a little bit of data that shows that garlic uh, can be helpful. The interesting thing that I, I did not realize was that they actually do recommend that you cut the garlic up, chop it, let it sit for 15 minutes, and then the cancer um, prohibiting um, enzymes seem to work a little bit better if you do that. So um, I never get a lecture without people asking you about, well, what foods, what about um, organic and non-organic. It's more important that you eat the fruits and vegetables, that you get the fiber. If you're, if you're concerned about uh, pesticides, um, there is a great website from the Environmental Working Group, and they call it the, you can just look up Clean 15, Dirty Dozen. It's in your handout. They update this every year. Um, and if you eat regularly, the ones on this list, well, then maybe you want to consider at least half the time um, changing for organic. Again, no single food can prevent you from getting cancer. It is really a lifestyle that's um, important. And um, there are some things that I always think it's great for people to do, think about on a regular basis. Take advantage of the foods that's out there that, are, that, are, that will make your life easier, frozen vegetables, for example. Bring your sneakers with you so you can always have that opportunity to walk, whether it's at lunch or after work. Don't waste your calories. Um, never travel without workout clothes and uh, weigh yourself often. And these are just some great websites for you to go to if you're looking for more specific information on um, diet and cancer. Thank you.